Hello everyone, you are most welcome to this video where I will be taking you through the five levels of the Sapienza Escalation Contract, the Eccleston Illumination. Just to note right away, the recording is from gameplay in the Hitman 3 game engine, and so this ought to be helpful to those of you who may have completed this before but want to get it completed in the Hitman oh, 3 game. So, for the first level, obviously you want to start in the lab starting location, dressed as a scientist, and that will have been the natural inclination of those of you who saw what you need to do in this first level of the escalation contract. So, nothing surprising there, and what you want to get done is you need to leave this room without attracting the attention of the one enforcer scientist who might see you in there. You want to head directly up the stairs that are just outside that room that you start in. And you want to cause a distraction by turning off this generator. Now, unless you're unlucky with someone who happens to be passing at the time, this should uh, very reliably get your one target in this first level to come up the stairs to investigate that generator. Here he comes now. And in the first level, there is no requirement as to what you use to kill him. Uh, so you can just whip out a starting silent pistol, one shot to the head. Uh, remember to make sure the generator's back on so no one else is going to come up and you can dispose of the body. Not that you necessarily need to dispose of the body as I'm not sure uh, if you're quick about it that anyone's going to bother coming up here in the time between your assassination and you leaving the first level. So there we go, very simple for the first stage, you just now need to find an escape route. The closest one is probably going to be this plane. So, just find a way to it. Don't get seen by the cameras. And away you go. Beautiful job for our first level. There we go. The second level of this contract adds a rather annoying challenge, which is trying to hack the laptop in the laboratory in addition to making the one kill. Uh, the kill can be done in the same way, but uh, as you may experience, hacking the laptop uh, is easier said than done and does require you to be just a little bit careful about uh, timing and making sure that no one sees you do it. Anyway, so we'll go and get our assassination first. So again, you just you want to leave, being careful not to be seen by any of the cameras or the enforcers. Up the stairs. Turn on the generator that we will use as a distraction. Our target should come up the stairs. We can just run laps if we want to kill time until he gets up here. Here I'm staying out of view as he actually comes up the stairs just because as he's in a suspicious state uh, you don't want him to see you. But then again no requirement as to how you get the kill so a silenced pistol shot to the head will do. Dump the body. And now on to our second objective, which as I say is to successfully hack this laptop. So the way you're going to be able to tell when you can get away with this is by watching this one uh, female lab technician who is the one enforcer in this environment, although it's worth noting that all of them will not take kindly if they can see you actually performing the hack. You want to wait until she walks away from that last task to go and look at this whiteboard. And if you do it at that exact moment, you have just long enough before she turns around to 
hack the laptop. No one is looking at you at this point. And you just finish in time to blend in so that she does not see you while she comes over here. And after she looks at this laptop or whatever it is she's looking at for a moment, after about five seconds she'll turn away. And that's when you can make your escape. Nearly seen there, but not quite. So again, just be careful to avoid cameras and enforcers as you make your way to the seaplane. And there we go. Beautiful job. The complication for the third level of this contract is that we will now have an additional target, but not to fear, he is... Uh, basically a very similar character to the first target. He is located in much the same place. He is indeed wearing the same costume. Um, I guess it's not a costume to them, it's their uniform. Uh, he's just another guard who patrols around exactly the same place that the first guy is posted. So the first guy is fairly static. I think he just stays in that location that we've been getting him to come up from. Um, pretty much all the time, whereas the new guard target patrols the area and is only, you know, sporadically in the location that the first target is in. Um, obviously you only want to distract one of them at a time, but to spice things up, firstly we are going to perform the hack on the laptop. Um, so you'll see here I'm just waiting for people to be positioned in the right place. Um, I will fast forward that now so that you don't have to sit through all the waiting that that entails at the start of this particular playthrough. So remember that you're just waiting for the scenario in which um, <laughs> no one is directly staring at you and the enforcer has gone to look at the whiteboard at the far end of the room. Do be careful just to check that no one else is looking at you when you commence the hack and you'll have just long enough to enter the system and obtain whatever details it is that you're obtaining here. There we go. So again, you can see that the enforcer turns around at just literally the point at which you're finished, finished hacking. So just make sure that you do not um, get seen by her. And as soon as she's turned away, we can go and actually complete the assassinations for this part of the challenge. Again, nearly seen there, so do just be careful not to be seen as you come oh, out of the, uh, of the lab. Okay, so, what right. what so as I said, obviously you want to get these targets alone one at a time. So you're going to need to be a bit, a bit more aware of when, who is down there. <gasps> First, we're going to get the same target we've been doing for all the other runs. He will come up the stairs now. One headshot, clean up the crime scene. Remember to turn the generator back on just so that no one else comes up whilst you're disposing of the body. And here it is more important that you move this shotgun um, because what you don't want is when your second target comes upstairs for them to see the weapon and prioritise taking the weapon away uh, because that will immediately mess up your timeline. Now I could see that my second target was in the right location for him to be the person who comes to investigate the distraction. So I've done that and here he comes. There we go. Second kill in the bag. 
get the generator back on so no one else is going to come up. Dispose of the body. And you're basically done with the third level of the escalation. Again, just be aware of your surroundings. Be careful not to be seen by an enforcer or a camera. And you can skirt these cameras by just sticking very close to the wall. That one moves, so just make sure that you're not going to be in its arc as it sweeps back across. And there we go, beautiful job. Level 4 of this escalation contract is really where it starts to get interesting. I would strongly recommend that you start as the chef here, um, and the associated starting location obviously, just because uh, it allows you slightly easier access to a couple of things that you're going to need to perform the assassinations. So if you start as the chef, the chef's assistant, you will be able to immediately um, run out along this ledge to the location which has the Plague Doctor outfit, which we don't need at this stage, but we'll need for the final stage, and this amputation knife, which is the weapon that you need to kill one of your targets with. You can then head back towards the uh, town area of the map because what we need to do next is to acquire the exploding golf ball which will be the tool with which we complete the other assassination. So it's the same two targets as we eliminated in the previous round of the escalation but this time we need to use the amputation knife for one and the exploding golf ball for the second. So, quickly as you like, the objective now is to reach the lab area, which obviously for the previous rounds we've been able to start in, but if you followed my advice for this round we won't be starting there, and we also won't have the lab technician outfit yet, uh, which we do need to be wearing when we complete the assassinations. So next on our list is to enter the lab area and to get the lab technician's outfit. Uh, just be aware here there is a CCTV camera right at the entrance of the lab that you'll want to shoot out with a silenced pistol just before you enter. Now you can turn off this fuse box and jump into this box to hide as a lab technician, convenient I know, will come and investigate the shutdown fuse box. And of course, as you can imagine, that's not going to go too well for him. We immediately subdue him and turn the fuse box back on so that none of his friends come to investigate. His friends, by the way, are two guards, so you don't want them coming to investigate. So now you have the outfit that we need to wear, the disguise that we need to wear for these two eliminations. Just stay out of the view of the cameras and of this enforcer. You'll see I've just gone to the right here uh, because that enforcer does walk around the map okay, and we don't want him okay, making you. Right. Um, head to your right to get a keycard for the lab. That's crucial because obviously we still need to hack the laptop and with uh, this starting location we will not have a keycard from the start. So there we go, now we've done the distraction again and our first target will come up the stairs just as he did in the first rounds of this escalation. The difference here is that obviously we're not going to take him out with a silenced pistol. Uh, we need to kill him with the explosive golf ball, the first stationary target that is. So, um, the way we're going to do that is that first we need to subdue him. Then drag him over so that he's ready to be put into the box. Uh, I find it best to leave him just a little bit back from the box because the explosion actually can knock him over the box. 
hide his gun uh, for the same reason that we hid the gun in the last round. We're going to be getting someone else up here. And then if you've positioned the body in the right place, you want to try and throw the explosive golf ball right next to him, but not at him. So if you throw it at him, um, it does seem to have a good chance of knocking him over the railings. If you throw it right on the floor next to him, then hopefully the idea is um, it will kill him and only knock him back a slight bit, which if you've left him just slightly back from the box, uh, allows you to run over and put his body into the box straight away and then you should be able to evade the body being Man, seen by these location. guards. Over. They also won't see his gun which we moved over here sensibly beforehand. So just stay out of sight of these guards and they will soon leave. There's a lab technician who may well walk through this area, so just stay out of his way. And then there's a guy in a hazmat suit who I, I'm not 100% sure why he appears, but I think actually it's an interesting part of, um, you know, causing a loud noise in the lab area. I think the guards summon a guy in a hazmat suit to also come and check out the area after they've left. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, basically, just wait for the area to be clear. As soon as the area is clear and you can see the second target uh, is just moving towards the right area for the distraction to summon him, we will turn the generator off. And he will head up the stairs. We can immediately turn the generator back on to make sure that no one else is going to follow him up. Of course, they wouldn't follow him up him up for quite a while anyway but worth just turning it off then and for our second target the moving uh, guard who roves between locations we want to be using the amputation knife so that's no problem just get up behind him and there we go again body can go straight in the same location Make sure you've put the knife away so you're not seen to be running around with it. And this is just a slightly better way to get back to the lab where you need to perform the hack on the laptop. You can go around the back of this area and down this drain pipe. Just avoid some of the enforcers and cameras that might otherwise cause you an issue. Just make sure that you'll be okay running across there because there is an enforcer to the left of the lab entrance. There we go, because we got the card earlier off that table, we can go straight into the lab, straight into blending in just to check our surroundings. And you can see that the timing isn't quite right now, so I'll just fast forward the clip as well to get through this waiting phase where you just wait to make sure that everyone's in the right position for you to perform the hack. So again, you're just waiting for the enforcer to have left her location over to your left um, and for everyone else to have removed themselves from the room or, or otherwise be looking away. So there we go, just as soon as she leaves that last task that she does to your left you can begin hacking and as before you will just you'll need to be quick up about getting off the mark when she leaves that workstation to your left because you will only just manage to complete this in time before she turns around as soon as that's done go back to blending in and the same routine as ever, we're just waiting now for her to look the other way so that we can leave the lab. Ah, that looks promising. Mental note, ask Guillermo to run a control experiment. There we go. Again, same deal as ever, be careful of cameras and enforcers. You see that? That, that guy nearly got me. And to the seaplane beautiful job. A 
and so to the fifth and final level of this escalation contract uh, which really does uh, up the stakes a bit what you need to do is you need to be completing both targets eliminations while dressed as the plague doctor uh, with the katana so again i think you should start as the chef's assistant uh, this, as we noted last time, is close to the Plague Doctor's costume, so that bit is fairly self-explanatory. Run along the same ledge as we did last time, pick your way through this lock, change into the Plague Doctor costume, and then you'll want to head straight up to the roof of the mansion. because you want to get to the attic area out here. So this is the way you climb that drain pipe onto the roof. And then there's another drain pipe over here that you need to climb. And that will get you to the door to the attic area. This is impossible. Now there's two guards Look up in this attic area like and Whilst it may be possible to get the katana from beside them without knocking them out, I personally thought it would be safest just to get them out of the picture. So I've thrown the propane tank as a distraction. That gets one guard over to that area. You can throw something at him to knock him out and then you can subdue this second guy. Then straight over to grab the katana. And grab the toy tank. Then you can drop down from the attic level back onto this roof. And then you want to just drop down from the roof to the observatory outdoor area, which is the same place that we climbed up the drain pipe to get onto the roof. Straight back down into the observatory where we took the Plague Doctor costume from and then you want to head down the stairs one more level to the uh, lab and there you can hack use a keycard hacker to hack the door there You're just waiting for a guard who comes up these stairs. As soon as he does, you can subdue him. And again, unclear if you really need to do this bit, but if you want to make sure Silent Assassin rating is intact, I would hide this body. So straight back up those stairs and into the bottom of the stairwell that we used to get down to the lab. And now another escalation for this level of the contract is that there is a guard who stays right by the generator that we obviously need to use and have been using for all the levels of this escalation. So we can use the tank as a distraction there, throw it roughly in the location that I just did. This guy will come and investigate that distraction. And really the important part here is just that I want to get his back turned to us for a moment which will happen if you just wait for him to finish investigating the distraction he will turn away and at that point you can of course subdue him so this body is uh, going to go in the box and again we're going to hide his gun because we don't want any of the other people who are going to be coming up here this evening to see it. So then, generator off and back on again. 
and that will get our first target to start coming up the stairs. Now, of course, this time we're not using any of the assassination methods we have been using previously. We are using the katana. So just be ready with that. And here we go. Lovely. A bit brutal. But anyway, his body can go straight back in the box. And we'll just hide the gun again for exactly the same reason. We've got another target that we're about to lure up here who, you know, worst thing in the world would be if he uh, saw the gun and raised the alarm or something. So we'll just get it out of the way. Back here should do the job. And then, again, the second target is the roving one. So he's currently over there. You just need to wait for him to move into the right location for him to be summoned. And he's approaching that location now. So generator on and generator straight back off again. He will now be coming up the stairs. So exactly the same procedure basically. I found you do want to wait until they get pretty much, you know, just before their level with the generator. Um, if you assassinate them sooner than that, I found that there was a chance that someone down on the ground level would spot you as you carried out the assassination. So then you can take the guard costume from him and we've had to leave his body unhidden, which is far from ideal, but I think if you're quick, no one will find that body. Then. We can just uh, wait until this guard is looking the other way and we can grab this keycard off the table. That keycard will allow you access to the lab um, to carry out the hack that we're going to do as the final part of this escalation. But we do want to get a lab technician's outfit or disguise just so that we uh, are allowed into the lab to carry out the hack. God knows it's hard enough finding a moment when people won't see you carrying it out anyway without trying to do it without the right uniform on. And mercifully, you don't have to keep the Plague Doctor costume on. So that's why we've been able to take the guard costume. And that's why we're now able to take the lab technician costume. Again, be careful that having done all of this, you're not caught out by a camera or an enforcer. There we go. Here, I'm just going to fast forward the uh, footage again as we wait for everyone to be in the right position. But we've done this, uh, what is it, three times before now. So you all know the score. We're just waiting for everyone to be positioned perfectly so that um, we have just enough time to carry out the hack, which we will have as soon as... There we go. Lovely, and go back to blending in, which you will need to do straight away. And again, just waiting for everyone to be, well, mainly for the enforcer to be looking away there. And then we can make our way to the exit. Um, again, avoiding enforcers and cameras. I just hesitated for a second for the camera to get out of the way. 
But yes, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and I hope this made the Eccleston illumination just a little bit more straightforward for you. Um, please do check out my other videos if you enjoyed this one. Uh, please do like it. Um, and please, if you wanted to subscribe, that would be absolutely fantastic. And I would be very grateful indeed. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.